Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 12th. And this program this week is going to be filled with artificial intelligence as opposed to real intelligence. Yeah, Keith of the Buckeye Boys would like that. Artificial intelligence, according to futurism.com, artificial intelligence is leading a revolution in medicine. Um, this actually might be a breakthrough because especially identifying patterns and stuff like that in medical exams. Um, at the end of this article, they talk about how they uh, actually beat the professionals at this. But anyway, in early August, IBM announced that it will acquire Merge Healthcare Incorporated, a company that sells systems that help medical professionals access and store medical images. The move is critical. It's a critical step in IBM's to put AI to work medically by training its Watson software to identify maladies like heart disease and cancer. Merge is valuable to IBM because it owns 30 billion images, including computerized tomography, x-rays, and magnetic resonance, resonance imaging scans. The company can also use these images in its deep learning training program. IBM is hoping that some kind of software that lets Flickr recognize your face or dog in your photos can help Watson identify systems of diseases. Um, yeah, it could pro probably streamline the medical care. I mean, it probably also may eliminate some doctor positions and stuff like that. But if you read it, it's about, this is a short article. It's maybe about a dozen paragraphs. And uh, at the very end, it says at least one smaller company, Enlitic Incorporated, has stated that its software was 50% more accurate than a panel of four radiologists in identifying malignant tumors in x-rays. So could even be saving lives to have artificial intelligence, at least if not replace doctors, at least assist them. As usual, all the links to all the articles will be found in the description below. And next, this is from BigThink.com, why very smart people are happiest alone. And I just published study about how our ancestral needs impact our modern feelings. Researchers uncovered something that will surprise few among the highly intelligent. While most people are happiest when they're surrounded by friends, smart people are happier when they're not. The researchers Norman P. Lai and Satoshi Kanazawa of the Singapore Management University um, were investigating the Savannah theory of happiness. In other words, uh, it's also called the evolutionary legacy hypothesis. We are basically based on what our past was when we lived and roamed the savannas. So um, having evolved psychology based on our ancestors' needs in the days when mankind lived on the savanna. And the study basically put together interviews of people with different intelligence levels and stuff like that. And uh, I'll skip to the middle part. The study found that people in general were less happy in areas of greater population de density. The report's authors see this as a support of the Savannah theory because we would naturally feel uneasy in larger groups if, as evidence site suggests, our brains evolved for functioning in groups of about 150 people. Now, I'm not really sure about the intelligence part of the hypothesis, but it's really interesting in the middle part of this article it's something that I've seen in a lot of studies too it seems like we can get along in a group of tight-knit people but it only goes to a certain extent once we reach about 150 people that's about the most uh, the largest size we can actually cope with as far as an extended family and friends and stuff like that uh, we kind of create our own tribes and stuff like that but uh, yeah I'll, I'll just read a few of them here Comparing the size of our neocortex to other primates and the sizes of the groups in which they dwell suggests a natural size of a human group is around 150 people. And then the average size of a modern hunter-gatherer societies is 148.4 people. And it also says when a group of people exceeds 150 to 200 people, it will tend to break into two in order to facilitate greater cooperation and reciprocity among its members. So, And there's other of these too, and they all seem to focus on that um, core group of about 150 people and past that you just don't get an optimal optimal member for a, a tribal group that you kind of create yourself so that to me was more interesting than what the article proposes and it's, uh, uh, I didn't think the different intelligence hypotheses were really that significant a part of the article at least for me but um, as usual leave your comments in the uh, description down in the uh, uh, comments down below the description in the YouTube video uh, and this last one here, this is kind of like sad in a way. I mean, it's technology, but it's kind of sad. A holo this is from stuff.co.nz, a hologram wife for Japan's Legion of Lonely Hearts. Now, I've talked before about the fact that Japan, because of the fact of the low birth rate and young people not getting together and getting married um, as much as they used to, that they're even giving people money to encourage them to do that. 
Well, this is it is being sold as salvation for Japan's lonely hearts. An attractive companion will send you text messages throughout the day to ask how you are and welcome you home with a kind word in evenings. The house warm just as you like it. You can watch television together and chat. And I'll put up a picture of this. This is a, a hologram, and there's a little video you can play too. But basically, you've got this little hologram that will send you messages during the day saying they miss you and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, the problem, let's say, says the, the only problem is. I'll try to pronounce this right. I hope I get it right. Azumi Hikari is a hologram. And she costs, um, well, let's see, in New Zealand, $3,600. So I don't know what the exchange rate is. That's probably still going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, you know, four or $5,000, if not, you know, more U or U.S. I don't know what the, no, I think the exchange rate, it might be around a little bit less, maybe around $3,200, but kind of sad. It says, with high levels of lonely adults in Japan, the manufacturers hope to tap into a rich market. Almost 70% of unmarried men and 60% of unmarried women are not in a relationship, according to Japan's National Institute of Population and Social Security Research, which released its five-year study in September. But the vast majority said they want to settle down. Nearly 90% of the respondents said they wanted to get married sometime in the future. Of those, 42% of the men and 44.2% of the women said they were virgins, an increase from 2010 when the last survey was carried out. The Institute was conducted at the same survey. Ah, when I'm good into all this stuff and everything like that, I'll just skip over that. So, uh, yeah, um, she's described in one of the videos, Miss Sakari, who is described as 20 years old and someone who likes donuts but hate, hates insects, wakes up her, I, I don't know about this wording too for uh, people, especially in the U.S. and Western country, wakes up her master with a gentle exhortation to get out of bed. They exchange fond farewells before he heads off to work text messages between his meetings and she is programmed to ensure the lights and heating are on before he gets home. The master can also receive impatient emails from his holographic partner if he is late getting home because she is lonely. Yeah, kind of, that's kind of sad. <laughs> but anyway, something that's going on. So I would like to uh, wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year because I will be skipping next week uh, celebrating Christmas with my family. I would also like to do a promo too for uh, Muzzle Mike's channel and the ITL report. He's been doing that every week for years now. He's uh, one of those people that did a start a weekly show. I just suggested me and maybe start a weekly show. I like people and I like it because it's not all professional and Hollywood polished. It's just whatever he decides to do when he turns the camera on. Um, sometimes it's a how-to video. Sometimes it's some uh, piece of technology he bought or something like that. And uh, this last one that he did was kind of a comedy bit where he, he wears this Russian hat and starts out with a Russian accent and somehow ends up doing a Charlie Chan impression at the end. But it, it's just anything you could possibly think of really on the show. So if you get a chance, I'll put the uh, link to his channel down below. Check out the ITL. stands for In the Lawn or it can be in the lounge or in the large garage, wherever he sets up his camera and decides to broadcast. So anyway, everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I will see you next on New Year's Eve.